So just remember a couple confusing things. When you, A is negative, that is what reflects across the x-axis, right? So that tells you the orientation of the reflection. This is not A. Nope. Oh, okay. That's this is B. Now there's two things you need to remember about B. If B is negative, that reflects about the y-axis. Yes. And when you're drawing on your desk, B also what does it be so? B stinks, right? B stinks. B messes everything up, right? So everybody makes the mistake and says, oh, the vertex is 6, negative 3. No, we have this B. B messes everything up. So there's two ways we can do this. The one way is we, as I mentioned before, you guys can set this equal to 0 and solve. Yep. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. I'll show you. I'll show you. I'll show you. The other way we can represent this is just to factor out B. Okay? So if we factored out B, it would look something like this. All right? Now, what this represents, what this means, if I look at the transformations now, my transformations is actually left 2, down 3. So my vertex is negative 2, negative 3. Did I do that? Yeah, uh, that should be negative. Yeah. yeah. OK? It's so excuse me, excuse me. So what I want you guys to see is the solving is the same thing as factoring out. A lot of people sometimes have trouble with the factoring out. So that's why I told you first chapter is just to solve for 0. It's a little bit easier. But you guys should be familiar with this. It, 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 does, it actually is a little bit you know, faster and easier um, for you guys. It does, I mean, they're both the same. It's just the both same way. To, that's x, that's y, right? So just another way to find the x coordinates, OK? But so the important thing is the reason why so we usually don't deal with b. So I, I just want to make this statement. When you guys have an equation with b, e. you just got to remember it's not a. It's actually you got to factor out the b. And that's what I'm saying. It makes everything like so confusing. So it's actually, you've got to make sure when you have a b that you factor out the b, which I did right here. Or like another way, just an easier way to do it is like this. Now again, I'm going to show you guys with the graph here in just a second. But this is now my vertex. And then is my a positive or negative? negative. A. Positive. positive. That's a positive one right there. So therefore, it opens up. So therefore, this is an absolute min. Yes. Because I factored out the negative 3. I divided out a negative 3 from negative 3x, and I divided a negative 3 from negative 6. So I thought the point of parentheses was to like separate it from negative 3x. It does. So why do you need to separate that? Well, it, this is the same thing. What's negative 3 times x? Negative 3x. What's negative 3 times 2? Negative 6. But what I'm saying is, this is the transformations. You're not going to get 2 from here, right? Yes. The vertex is not negative 6. There is not 6. The vertex is negative 2. So when you factor it out, it's easier to see what the vertex is. Okay. okay? Or if that doesn't make sense, just sol set it equal to zero and solve like we did chapter one, and you'll get the same answer. So why is negative three not a? Because a is on the outside. Okay. B is on the inside. See the difference? Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yes. Now, okay. So I know that the negatives on the outside reflect over the x axis. So mm -hmm. Negative on the inside reflects over the y axis. And what? How would the three go? So if you guys, we don't really need to be concerned, excuse me, right now. Um, I'm throwing these three in there because, again, three is going to stretch and compress it. But guys, does it matter if that parabola is like skinny or fatter? Is the vertex still the same? Yeah, so at this point, we're not really concerned about graphing or any kind of things. But this would be a uh, vertic or sorry, horizontal compression. Okay. But again, that, that was, um, I mean, just so you know, that's what that was. But yeah, it's not something I'm concerned with. Right now, we just want to know the vertex and if it's absolute maximum. Don't need to worry about graphing it or anything like that. Okay. Now, I do want to show you guys in Desmos why that's true. 